Traffic congestions, pollution, and rapid population growth are all making life more difficult in mega cities around the world. At the same time, the facilities available to the public are attracting people living in smaller urban areas to migrate to big cities. With a growth in population comes a growth in the size of big cities, and with it, myriad problems for the residents. Iran is a country with a population of more than 75 million, most of whom live in big cities such as the capital Tehran, Mashhad, Esfahan, Tabriz, and Shiraz. Every day, millions commute between their homes and workplaces, either inside those cities or outside, using either public or private transportation. The influx of people during the morning and evening rush hour causes hours-long traffic jams on city streets and highways flowing in and out of them, resulting in heavy air pollution and a rise in fuel consumption, not to mention the inevitable waste of time. As people started to get to their destinations later and later, and as air pollution started to get worse, the Iranian government embarked on a plan to rein in the situation and make it easier and cheaper for commuters to make their daily journeys. The plan included building tunnels, bridges, bus rapid transit or BRT lines, and subway systems in Tehran and other big cities. Despite the high costs involved in its construction, the Tehran Metro Execution Plan, considered one of the most efficient solutions to the traffic issues of big cities, was given top priority by both the government and the parliament. With the inauguration of Tehran's MRT, another word for metro, in 1999, and with the construction of the subway system in Mashhad in its implementation phase, Iran's High Council of Traffic was encouraged to approve plans for construction of subway systems for other cities such as Esfahan, Tabriz, Shiraz, Karaj, and a little later, Ahwaz and Rom. The metro in Tehran runs 170 kilometers and consists of four partly subterranean operational lines carrying more than 2 million passengers a day. And its counterpart, the Mashhad light rail, consists of one line that spans 25 kilometers. This Iran today zooms in on the construction of underground rapid transit systems in Iran's big cities. One of the biggest issues facing the Iranian government and big city dwellers is traffic jams. The long lines of slow-moving cars on the streets and highways, the painful waste of time that could otherwise be put to much better use, the millions of liters of fuel consumed, and the nerves that are frayed. And with one new car ending up on the streets of this country every 20 seconds, it looks like traffic jams are here to stay. هرچی ما معابر شهری رو توسعه بدیم، هرچی آزاد راه بسازیم، بزرگ راه بسازیم، بالاخره اینا یه روزی پر میشن. به دلیل اینکه عرضه افزایش However many streets we lay, however many highways and freeways we build, it's never going to be enough because demand keeps going up. And when commuting between any two places is made easier because of a freeway, people want to use their own cars to get from A to B. The number of cars each family has has gone up. Instead of having one car, they have two or three. So all the highways and freeways are packed with the ever-increasing number of cars until eventually there is no space for new vehicles. It's a vicious circle. Factories churn out new cars cramming the streets, 
and we are busy providing everyone with their own vehicle instead of thinking about how to best facilitate people's commute. Merely building more roads isn't the answer to traffic jams. We're talking about a city where some 400,000 new cars are entering its streets and nowhere near as many are being written off every year. Therefore, you'll always have traffic-related problems. Beyond the bumper-to-bumper -bumper traffic, there is an invisible monster insidiously threatening the lives of urbanites, air pollution, that's only gotten worse over the past years. According to stats released in 2010, the vehicles moving about in the Iranian capital city are sending 1,192 tons of pollutants into the air every day. That, coupled with the pollution in other cities, is annually killing some 45,000 people across the country. Cars cause direct and indirect costs. Sound and air pollution and the fuel subsidies that are being doled out all the time are indirect costs. Our traffic problems cannot be solved by adding to the number of cars on the road. They cause traffic and the indirect costs I mentioned. In order to alleviate the problem, the Iranian government allocated staggering funds to metro construction in its big cities. Given the sheer size of Iran and our populous cities, the metro is absolutely vital. Tehran itself has a population of 12 million and its suburbs 1.5 million. Pollution is a major concern. The hospitals are constantly battling conditions caused by pollution and traffic congestion is a daily nuisance. So we need the metro system. In the year 2007, the government and parliament agreed on the fuel consumption management law and the expansion of inner and intercity transportation fleets. They decided to provide the grant for 70% of inner city trips to be made via public transportation. And of the 70%, the subway in Tehran was supposed to account for 10% of the trips and the ones in other megacities up to 30%. It all began in the country's most populated city, Tehran. Although that plan was made operational in 1971, it wasn't until 1976 when actual construction work started. With the 1979 Islamic Revolution, all foreign companies left Iran paralyzing the construction work. Yet laying the subway rails in Tehran was put on hold for only two years during the devastating Iran-Iraq war in the 1980s that lasted for eight long years. Over the past decade, Tehranis have seen several metro stations pop up here and there in this city. The Tehran Metro now has four lines operating at full capacity, taking two million passengers every day from 78 stations along 170 kilometers. Authorities say they're not going to suffice to the four operational lines. They're planning to expand that to eight lines traveling 250 kilometers within the next 13 years. And apart from that, they're planning to build another four rapid transfer lines running as long as 179 kilometers, taking the distance the Tehran Metro can travel to 430 kilometers. The Tehran Urban and Suburban Railway Operations Company has an ambitious plan that links the capital to the cities located on the so-called Green Beltway along the Caspian Sea in the country's north. It's a 100-kilometer project, 80 kilometers of which will be snaking through tunnels burrowed through the heart of the Alborz mountain range that sits between Tehran and the northern areas of the country. If and when completed, It'll cut traveling time from Tehran to the north from the present four or five hour road trips to
to 30 or 45 minutes on the train. The obvious reason is that instead of meandering in the mountains, the metro rail follows a straight line. Despite its short history, Tehran's metro has been able to win a good ranking among similar networks in other parts of the world. According to the most recent statistics, with a network length index of 120, Iran's is the 21st longest metro railway in the world. The most outstanding feature of the Tehran metro is the ticket price, the third cheapest in the world thanks to the subsidies from the government. As for the ticket price index, we are the third best in the world, meaning we are offering the tickets at a lower price than their real value, and we are compensated via the subsidies provided by the government. If we continue according to plan, the Tehran Metro is going to be one of the ten best globally. As for the number of stations index, we still have a long way to go. Obviously, we're going to see more stations built if everything goes according to plan. After days of correspondence and phone call exchanges with the Tehran Urban and Suburban Railway Operations Company, we were finally told we could interview Habil Darvish, the man filling the highest managerial position in the company. But to our disappointment, he cancelled minutes before the interview was to begin. Isfahan, another big city with an ongoing metro project. It's a city located in the center of the country and home to some of the most important historical sites in the world. For the same reason, that is because it's a historical city, the construction of the subway in the city has caused a lot of controversy. Because Esfahan is a historical city with sites registered on the World Heritage List, more caution is being exercised in building the metro there, and naturally it's going to take more time. The UNESCO representative who visited Esfahan was impressed with the work we are doing, because the precision with which we are working is more than the global average. It's been more than a decade since Esfahan's metro project, which contains three lines covering a total of 50 kilometers, started. But with the construction of only one line now underway, the completion of all three lines is still nowhere in sight. We wanted to know why, so we went straight to the city's urban railway organization and talked to the manager. He put the blame for the slow progress squarely on the government. The budget law is passed every year and we are thankful for the budget we have been allotted. Executive work has never been without problems, but the reason it's taking the metro project here so long to be completed is because the budget wasn't allocated to us on time. I hope Line 1 will become completely operational in the next two years. Line 2 is now being designed. And again, because of the historical importance of Esfahan, Iranian advisors are working with their foreign counterparts in drawing up the design for Line 2. Next in line, Shiraz, the sixth most populous city in Iran's southwest. Like Isfahan, Shiraz is also home to many and varied historical monuments. And like Isfahan, construction of its metro system has been progressing at a snail's pace. 
It's a six-line railway network supposed to cover 90 kilometers. The project was launched 11 years ago, but only one line is about to become operational. We sat down with the managing director of the city's urban and suburban railway operations company. The problems involved range from ownership issues to unexpected problems that the terrain has posed to us. As you know, Shiraz is a historical city and part of the metro railway was planned to go past the area where the Vakil Bazaar and Argov Karim Khan are located. Something like that required special measures so we would protect those historical sites from damage. Therefore, we took the necessary measures and the job was done successfully. The urban and suburban railway operations company in each of the cities with metro projects underway works independently of the rest of the country. And as independent companies, they can contract the project to Iranian or foreign engineers. But we decided to ask operations director Hassan Moradi about the extent to which they draw on domestic know-how in implementing the project in Shiraz. We designed and produced uh, some of the things we needed here in Iran and uh, imported the rest, such as the uh, TBM machine used to excavate deep tunnels for the subway trains. TBM is a joint product of Germany, Sweden and France. Uh, but when we imported machines like that and assembled them here, we realized that we could domestically produce some of their parts we wouldn't have to pay for the spare parts. Um, luckily, we've learned many things about the production of such machines. Foreign experts were involved in the building of the metro in Shiraz, but their role was minimal. The foreign experts did the first assessment of the plan, but the Iranian experts are taking care of the rest of it, from tunnel excavations to lining to installation of everything inside those tunnels. Apart from operational glitches, Iran is grappling with other problems equipping its cities with the subway system. Since its nuclear energy program was thrown into the spotlight in 2003, it's been slapped with several rounds of U.S.-led sanctions. The sanctions, Western countries claim, are aimed at slowing Iran's nuclear energy program's progress towards supposed weaponization, a charge the Iranian government categorically denies. But politics aside, the fact is the punitive measures are directly affecting infrastructural projects underway to make life easier for the general Iranian public. We've been facing some difficulties procuring certain equipment such as elevators and escalators because of the sanctions. These are things that are used for helping people get into and out of the metro and have nothing to do with the nuclear energy program. We also need ventilators that are needed for taking the smoke out of the metro tunnels in the event of a fire. Yet companies that used to sell them to us are now refusing to do so. We won't say the sanctions haven't had any impact on us. They have stalled our progress. Have we sat back and waited for them to be lifted? No, we haven't. We are moving on slowly, but we are moving on our own. Sanctions have helped our industries, our engineers and construction companies to become more dynamic. So they have done us as much good as harm. Despite all the problems, the metro officials in Shiraz say they are optimistic the first of the six lines under construction will become operational in the next seven months' time.
Phase one of the Shiraz Metro will come online by the end of this year and will hopefully ease the traffic problem in Shiraz to a great extent. Phase two of line one will become operational next year. The rest are now in their preliminary stages, and we hope we'll be able to implement them according to the plan. Except for Tehran and Mashhad, the subway construction projects in all other Iranian cities are making little if any progress, due directly to the Western imposed sanctions on Iran and a lack of adequate government provided funding. Transportation is a very costly industry. It's the same in all countries. It's not limited to Iran. I'll give you an example. The cost for the construction of one kilometer of a two-line subway rail can run up to $80 million, much more than the cost of a kilometer of railroad connecting two cities, which adds up to around $8 million. The reason is the building in the city, the tunnels that have to be dug, among other things. All of that pushes the costs up. Another problem here is that half of the funding for metro projects has to be provided by the government and the other half by the municipalities. But the point is that except for Tehran's municipality, the ones in other cities in Iran cannot afford such high costs. That's one of the biggest reasons we aren't able to move on according to plan. Hamid Reza Fuladgar is a member of the Iranian parliament. We asked him if the legislative body had any plans to change the status quo regarding the subway projects underway around the country. I think if the new parliament wants to do something about the metro project and if it wants to outperform its predecessor, it has to implement the fuel consumption management and expansion of inner and outer city transportation law. A part of the public and provincial budgets will have to be allocated to those projects. It has to facilitate ways to secure funding for those projects, such as foreign investment, selling stock, and engaging the private sector. The metro projects in Iran should have started much earlier than they did. Still, they are a welcome change in the public transportation system and a must-have in providing citizens with welfare. Yet they can prove very challenging, especially in older cities, and extremely expensive, especially during an uncertain economic situation that the world is going through. Despite that, Iranian officials say the projects will continue regardless of the pace. The projection is Iran will have built 56 subway lines, 1,400 kilometers in length, by 2025. But with the stringent U.S.-led sanctions still in place, and with the domestic economy strained under public demands, and more importantly, with the astronomically high costs involved, whether or not Iran achieves that goal is something that only time will tell.